Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, October 27th. So the moon is in Virgo energy all day. So we're looking to kind of examine, analyze our lives, the problematic areas, the areas that are still a little bit crazy, a little bit chaotic, a little bit disorganized. The Virgo energy wants us to put everything back in its place, back in order, so to speak. And whatever isn't working, whatever is kind of gumming up the system, the gumming up the lane in order for us to kind of move on and make some progress, we're going to kind of figure out where some adjustments, where some improvements can definitely be made. So we have to consider the fact that the Virgo moon, emotionally speaking, has us fixated on what isn't working so that we can improve it, so that we can heal it, fix it, repair it, solve it, and put ourselves in a better situation, a better circumstance. But of course, Mercury rules over this Virgo energy. So we're all up in the headspace. We're doing a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, a lot of strategizing, a lot of analyzing, especially where the finer details of our day-to-day -day lives are concerned. So there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Virgo going to make a harsh interaction with the North Node in Aries energy right out of the gate. We have a lot of back-to-back -back conflict, tension, trigger, activating type of energies here this morning. And with the moon kind of, you know, rubbing us the wrong way as far as thinking about our future visions or future goals go, that North Node trying to get us to focus on those things, trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us in alignment with the soul's mission, the soul's quest, the soul's purpose. However, the moon in Virgo, we know that there are many different options available to us as far as the future path goes there aren't as many options in the present moment, meaning we have to clean things up. We're in a closure series. We're in a finality series. We're in a completion series. And so we don't really have that much time, energy, and mental power to be thinking about all the different ways we could go about creating a new situation and circumstance for us in the future while we're still dealing with situations and circumstances that aren't working, that aren't serving here in the present moment. Now, the one good thing that could come out about us giving ourselves a little bit of permission to think about the future is that when we do so, and then we come back into the present moment, we're able to see the existing system structures, routines, relationship dynamics in the present moment that need to be kind of fixed, healed, repaired, or in some cases detached from altogether in order for that futuristic goal, vision, and dream to actually manifest. So sometimes when we're thinking about our futuristic selves and then we come back into the present moment, we're like, oh, no, that's got to go. That person's got to go. That's not coming with me. And of course, that provides us the clarity on the issues, the problems that we need to adjust, improve, fix, heal, and resolve. Now, Mercury Ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury and is in rulership over this Virgo energy. Mercury is in Scorpio energy. We kind of talked about how Virgo energy and Scorpio energy work very well together because we want to kind of understand things. We want to analyze. We want to ask the right questions. We want all the information and the answers in order for us to make a decision on what needs to change, what needs to transform. So Mercury in Scorpio energy going to make some harsh interactions here. First with Chiron, second with Jupiter. Now this is important because technically speaking, these guys, these three are creating a yod and a yod also known as the finger of God, usually gives us a tension point and a tension point in order for us to kind of see what we're missing and what it is that we need as far as information and details go in order to kind of make an informed decision. So Jupiter and Chiron will eventually be coming into a sextile. It's not exact as of yet, but Mercury kind of creating this tension with first Chiron and then Jupiter, putting us in a situation to realize that we need perspective. We need understanding. We need the dots to connect the puzzle pieces to fit in with each other to kind of piece together a bigger, broader picture. And because we are currently lacking the information, the details that we feel we need, 
we are working with what we got. And at this particular juncture, because Jupiter magnifies and he's currently retrograde, so there's a lot of reflection back, we're looking for perspective and understanding on how it is that we've gotten here, the choices, the decisions that we've made. We are looking back at some circumstances that have unfolded that we're still trying to make sense of. Again, the further away we get from this eclipse energy, the more clarity we are going to gain. But basically, we're in a situation right now where we're overestimating our ability to, you know, make the changes, our ability to boss up, our ability to take action and make moves in the way that we want. We are, because Jupiter magnifies, we are overestimating what we're able to actually achieve. And of course, when we are overestimating, what that does is it puts us in a situation to make commitments or to align with a particular outcome that, of course, is setting us up for disappointment. Because when you have an expectation that isn't based in reality, you know it's not going to go well. You know it's not going to go right. So we start moving into this fear, this doubt, this insecurity about ourselves, about our ability to actually do the hard things that need to be done in order to break away from this current circumstance and set us up for futuristic success. And the seesaw, you know, the teeter-totter that we've been in, you know, all throughout Libra season, well, we're back on the seesaw and we will be on the seesaw of indecision trying to figure out, you know, what option, what alternative is the best way for us to go until the new moon in Scorpio. But we're definitely all up in the headspace because of this moon in Virgo energy and now these mercurial placements. And we're just trying to kind of sort the pros and cons of each different option, each different variable that we have available to us, not necessarily to move on, to move forward, to make some progress, but to wrap up the loose ends of the past, bring a finality, bring a closure. So the moon in Virgo energy is then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury. So it's almost like our heart space, the moon and our head space, Mercury, they're coming together after this little cluster F after this little intensity taking place in our choices, in our thoughts, in our reflection back, the moon in Virgo, again, emotionally wants to sort out our feelings, get organized, focus in on the smaller details of some of the issues that are problematic in this present moment in the here and now, and provide some sort of solution. Now, Mercury, on the other hand, in the Scorpio energy, we're doing a deep dive in our psyche. We're doing a deep dive in our perspective, in our understanding, in our narrative. And what we're understanding right now is what is needed, which is to operate from an organized emotional place, to operate from an organized and grounded mental place. And so our heart and our head are coming together. And again, when you water earth, something grows. And what we're doing is we're growing a plan, a strategy to come to a certain decision point, to come to a certain realization point on again, what needs to die, what needs to end, and what needs to kind of be planted as far as new seeds of attentions go. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring, square off, fight it out with Venus. Venus being the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in Sag energy. And typically speaking, earth and fire don't necessarily work so well together. Why is that? Well, because when you light things on fire, the earth turns into ash. And when you are kind of adding too much earth onto fire, you snuff that flame out. So there's a very, very delicate balance that you have to strike between earth energies and fire energies so that it's actually creating something, it's regenerating something instead of being damaging and burning the whole place down. So emotionally speaking, the moon in this Virgo energy, we're just kind of focused on, you know, the smaller details of our day to day lives of how it is that we're thinking how it is that we're feeling Venus over here in Sag energy she's scattered as F like a squirrel okay a little bit of ADHD going on with the Sag energy we have a hard time focusing we have a hard time staying in alignment with one concept one thought one idea over anything else we're bouncing from one thing to the other and in Sag energy we're feeling a lot more free we want to explore we want to experiment but you can't really contain that kind of energy. And Virgo right now, all about containment, all about organizing, all about getting grounded. And the last thing that the Sag energy wants to do is stay in one place, ground and get organized. We're just free flowing. We're as optimistic and confident about, you know, our happiness, our joy, our futuristic selves, those relationship dynamics, those routines based on nothing in reality. This just kind of hopes, wishes and dreams at this point. 
The reality check that Virgo energy brings is a little bit harsh to the Sag energy that Venus is in. So this is going to highlight growing pains where it is that we want to be someplace. But in order to get to that place, we have to clean up the present moment, clean up the past. And there is this urgency that we're feeling to figure everything out, to resolve and fix and heal everything now so that we can get on to the good parts. The moon then going to semi-square Mars. Mars is the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, and is in Cancer energy. We're going to be shifting into Leo energy late next week. If you haven't listened to the Ascension forecast for this week, I'm going to recommend you do so. The moon and Mars coming together in a semi-square is a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict, not as much as a full square would be, but we're getting rubbed the wrong way, so to speak. Now, here's the thing. Mars in cancer energy is in preservation mode. We are willing to fight, defend, protect what it is that we deem to be of worth and value, what it is that we've built and created that is working for us, especially where our emotional peace is concerned. But the moon in Virgo, not so concerned with any of that. We realize that keeping things the same means that we're going to continue to stay in a situation and a circumstance that is chaotic, is unfair, is overwhelming. The Virgo energy being mutable needs constant change, needs constant adjustments, need constant improvement. The cardinal energy of cancer that Mars is currently in we're kind of, you know, we're resisting those changes unless we're given really good reason to make any kind of changes. And again, the emotional safety, security, stability that we're actually looking for at this moment is something that we are kind of romanticizing as far as the past goes. We're not as happy. We're not as content. We don't feel as safe and secure. We don't feel as happy as we're trying to convince ourselves that we actually do, because, of course, admitting that we don't have any of those things puts a lot of responsibility on our shoulders to make the changes that at this particular juncture, we're just not sure that we're willing to make. So this is going to ruffle some feathers. This is going to bring up a lot of discomfort. This is going to even trigger the restlessness, the ants in our pants, and could lead to some frustration. The moon is going to sit across from directly oppose Saturn. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma. He is retrograde and Pisces energy. Virgo and Pisces sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. Virgo energy in Earth sign, very connected to the physical body, to the present moment, to our mental health. While that Pisces energy is emotional, it's spiritual, it's intuitive. And so it is still on the healing axis. So we do have to balance out the time, energy and attention that we're pouring into our physical body, our physical circumstances, our mental health and the time that we are pouring into refreshing and renewing our soul and our spirit through the emotional and intuitive practices that, of course, we need to be engaged in. So the moon sitting across from Saturn, of course, being in an opposition doesn't feel good. We're sitting across the table trying to find balance here. And here's the thing. Saturn brings a little bit of a reality check and he's currently retrograde, which means that we have to take a good look within ourselves and figure out where it is that we need to boss up, where we have to have a little bit more willpower, a little bit more discipline to actually see something through, especially the destruction, if you will, of the old version of self, the old realm and reality that that old version of self is built and created based off of what we believed to be true, what we believed we were worthy and deserving of at the time, which of course the new version of self now online, taking a good look around sees that we kind of settled. We kind of did ourselves a disservice. Now we have to clean up the remnants of that old version of self's world in order for us to start tapping into those creator abilities, bringing new aspects online that are more in alignment with this new version of self with our soul and our spirit. So emotionally speaking, in this Virgo energy, we're taking a good look at where it is that guess what, we don't believe the same types of things anymore. We don't need the same types of things, people, places and things anymore. We don't need to continue to live in a construct of a false reality that the old version of self scared to be the true authentic self had built and created. So now we're at, at odds, basically with the world that we once very much enjoyed. Mercury, he's on deck again. Mercury and Scorpio energy going to make an awkward interaction with that North Node in Aries. So this is very similar to when the moon at the beginning of the day made a harsh interaction with that North Node, because realistically speaking, yes, it would be great to think about the future. Yes, it would be great to take action, to make moves, to make some progress in a new path, in a new direction. But 
We have too many loose ends hanging over us from the past. There's too many things up in the air. There's too many things that haven't come to an ending, to a closure point. And we have to do some detective work. That's what the Scorpio energy is all about. So Mercury kind of is blending the intellect with the intuitive gut reaction of Scorpio energy. And we're taking a good look back at the choices, at the decisions that we made, why we made them, what part of us actually made them, the wounded self or the healed self. And because of that, we're not really willing to do too much as far as piecing together a new futuristic reality goes, because we don't want to make the same mistakes again. And if we know if we do not heal the part of self that created and chose and aligned with some of the, you know, people, places and things that currently we're trying to put behind us, if we don't heal that version of self, we are only going to choose the exact same energy in different people, places and things, because again, you can only kind of choose or manifest or create in the external realm based off of what you're thinking, how you're feeling, where you're at in your consciousness in your inner realm. So if we don't do the work, and again, we're in Scorpio season, it is about shadow work, if we're not willing to do the work, if we're not willing to come to a different perspective, a true deeper understanding of how it is that we created the particular circumstances that we're currently looking to get out of, then there is a high probability that we are going to repeat those same patterns, those same behaviors, those same decisions and choice points yet again. The moon in Virgo going to make a positive interaction with the with Chiron, who of course is retrograde in this Aries energy. This is beautiful because it means that we're not sitting in the wounds, we're sitting in our ability to heal them. There's a new level of awareness within ourselves, the emotions, the mental plane, the parts that are crazy and chaotic that we're avoiding. Again, with Chiron being retrograde, we're more apt to kind of identify the problematic areas and actually do something about it instead of sweeping it under the rug. The moon in Virgo just wants to make the adjustments, wants to make the improvements in order for us to, again, fix, heal, repair, and solve some of the issues that have kept us in the wounded state of being, making the choices, making the decisions that, of course, got us where it is that we're at and got us what it is that we no longer want. The moon in Virgo energy, then going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune, who, of course, is retrograde in this Pisces energy as well. This is going to kind of put us at odds because, of course, Neptune wants us to rely on our instincts, on our intuition, wants us to trust our higher self, our soul self, wants us to trust the greater, grander plan of the cosmos of the universe. Well, that's all good and well, except for the fact that the Virgo energy is so rooted here in reality, so rooted in what is instead of what could be, because that's where the Pisces energy comes in, that we're having a hard time kind of balancing out where it is that we do have to have hope and faith and where it is that we also have to, you know, have a little bit of a reality check, kind of see what currently is, deal with what currently is and hope for the best when it comes to futuristic wants, needs and desires. Now, the last thing that we have going on here today is Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Sagittarius energy, making an awkward interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, who, of course, is in cancer energy. So first of all, we have the feminine divine energy and the masculine divine energy coming together. And any time that Venus and Mars come together, there's a little bit of a spark that gets created. Now, this spark could come out of passion and desire and creativity, or it could come out of frustration, it could com come out of competitiveness, it could come out of being overstimulated in all of the wrong ways. So depending where we're at, depending how it manifests for you, there's going to be a situation, a circumstance pop off in order to illuminate where it is that we have the option to take different approaches to our goals, to our visions, to our desires, to our to-do list. And so it kind of feels like there is a new tension being illuminated um, within ourselves, especially when it comes to the way that we are looking at the people that we're choosing to share time, energy and space with. Basically, Venus is involved. So we're talking about relationship dynamics. Here's the thing. Mars, he's got ants in his pants. We want to watch out for making any kind of impulse moves. We don't want to do that. 
the tendency is going to want to be there. That's what Mars is all about. But we have to avoid that particular energy because we're not in a very good spot to make certain moves, to take certain actions. We also kind of just want to see where it is that we are either going to be triggered in a positive way to boss up, be motivated and inspired to kind of hone in on our target, on our goal, what we actually want to achieve, or we get so overwhelmed with what that would actually mean for us that we're trying to check out from reality. And so there's going to be some uncomfortable thoughts and feelings that come out. We're seeing ourselves, we're seeing people in a different light. The world around us hasn't really changed, but the way that we're seeing the world around us has definitely changed. And because we are kind of shifting our heart space, we're changing our priorities and values. We're not as attracted to certain people, places and things, qualities and characteristics the way that we once were. Our taste in what we find to make us happy, to bring us a sense of calmness and comfort, um, our ability to kind of feel comfortable with some people around us, that is all changing. We are, again, not really seeing the physical changes that you would think we would be seeing to have this vast of a difference in our perspective. The lens that we are now looking at the world around us from is very, very different. And so we're starting to kind of see where it is that there, this is the beginning of the end for a lot of relationship dynamics, for a lot of the tasks and chores that we kind of once enjoyed or once didn't bother us that now we can barely stand. This is about us realizing where our happiness, our joy, our safety, our security is now rapidly changing and where it is that some people, places and things just aren't kind of reaching our needs, so to speak. And so what this is going to do is help us unpack some of these issues, especially being in Scorpio energy, where we're holding on to the old for dear life just because we don't know what else is going to be coming at us, where it is that we have to tackle the not so nice thoughts and feelings and where it is that we're having certain emotions towards realizing that certain people and places and things aren't going to be a part of our future. So it's a very sobering effect, I would say, but it's also going to bring a lot of perspective in when, of course, you don't react to your triggers and you can act as the observer and see where these frustrations, where this discomfort is trying to show you that there is a, a, a symbolic, energetic nudge in one direction over the other. 